This Thursday, May 8, is the 2014 NFL Draft. To get us started this week, I asked Train's guitarist and resident football junkie, Jimmy Stafford, to give us a draft day prediction. What do you got for us, Jimmy? Thanks, Pat. Well, you know, I'm looking at teams in the top 10 order this year, and uh, I don't know a lot about these uh, young players that are uh, entering the draft this year, but there are a couple big names that I'd like to mention. One is this uh, this Johnny Football Manziel guy from Texas A&M. Uh, he's a really great player, but you know he's not very big. Um, however, a lot of people are saying he's you know for that reason he's going to go later later rounds. I disagree. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go number one off the board uh, with the Houston Texans, who get the number one pick. They could use a quarterback. He's a Texas guy. It seems like a really good fit for him. So don't be surprised if Johnny Football Manziel goes number one off the board. You know, the other big player everybody's talking about is this clowny fella from South Carolina. Uh, he's a really great defensive player. There's a lot of teams that want him. The Rams have traded up to the second draft pick. They traded Washington Redskins for that pick. However, I don't think the Rams are going to take him. I think they, they might jump on a receiver. We'll see about that, but uh, Jacksonville sitting at number three and Cleveland Browns sitting at number four, they could both use a guy like Clowney. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go number three, four, or even number five with the Oakland Raiders. I think he'd be a really good fit with the Raiders. But anyways, I don't really know anything much about uh, the rest of the young players. Uh, all I know is the Bears don't get a pick until the 14th, and that's my, uh, my team. Your Steelers are the 15th, so I hope... Whoever they were going to pick, the Bears uh, swipe from underneath them. Anyways, it's going to be a great year. I love football. Can't wait to uh, watch the draft live on at Radio City Music Hall. And uh, that's it. Back to you and your stupid podcast. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, it seemed right to uh, it seemed right to start that way because this week the Patcast is getting deep into the NFL territory. I first met Doug Hendrickson when Train played the 2013 Pro Bowl in Hawaii. I knew I liked that guy right away. He's warm, genuine, and charismatic, and he lives in San Francisco. As an NFL agent, he represents 40 pro football players who span all but one team in the league. He's a busy guy and very successful, but I didn't realize just how great he is at what he does until I heard a story about a player he represents. The player had gone out and bought a Bentley. And as soon as Doug heard about it, he said, no way. And he not only made the player bring it back, but made sure the Bentley dealership, which was reluctant to take it back, eventually came to their senses. He is the kind of guy who uh, not only looks for the biggest payday for his players, but he tries to make the right decisions for their future as well. It's rare, but important. You may have heard that despite the huge paycheck some of the top players make, a disproportionate number of them end up bankrupt shortly after retirement. It's a sad statistic and one that more agents should be worried about. Doug is a guy that tries to do the right thing. And it was through Doug that I met another guy who tries to do the right thing for his players, Tom Dimitrov. Uh, he's the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons and an amazingly great guy, super sweet guy. Uh, he's come to a few train shows in Atlanta, and we always end up picking each other's brains at the end of the night. He's a big music fan, and I've been a big football fan since I was a kid, so it's a good match. Uh, the third guest on this week's podcast is a bit of a wild card. He happens to be Doug's best friend, and he was tagging along with the football guys that night. Gavin Newsom, as uh, mayor of San Francisco, gained a reputation as a progressive and a reformer. Uh, in, in a city that is very close to my heart. Now, as lieutenant governor of the state of California, he's bringing his message to the people on a larger scale. To say that guy is well-liked is probably an understatement. Uh, he has a way with words and a way with people being around. Gavin can, uh, can, can give you the impression that maybe there's a new JFK in American politics. Uh, and I'll be shocked and disappointed if this guy doesn't go on to... Uh, great things maybe possibly the uh the president's the presidency the president's club there's a club for presidents that i'd like to go to and he maybe will be there uh so an nfl agent 
an NFL general manager and uh, the lieutenant governor of California walk into a bar. Uh, yeah, I just uh, made them do the podcast. We didn't go to the bar. I had wine in my room. It was two days before the 2014 Super Bowl, an epic pummeling of uh, the favored Denver Broncos by the newly dangerous Seattle Seahawks in New York City. Train had just finished playing the Howard Stern birthday bash, and I met up with Doug and Thomas, and it was that night that they introduced me to Gavin. Of course, I, I wasn't going to let them leave without doing a podcast, so we uh, set up the mics uh, for a late-night session to talk about the Super Bowl, the present and future of the NFL, politics, music, and a whole bunch more. So here you go, folks. Maybe my favorite thing I've ever done this week on the Draft Week edition of the PatCast, it's NFL agent Doug Hendrickson, GM of the Atlanta Falcons, Tom Dimitrov, and California's Lieutenant Governor, Gavin Newsom. What do you do when nobody's looking, nobody's looking, what do you do? What do you do when nobody's looking, nobody's looking, looking at you? You got to get it while they're getting is good. Hey everybody, we're back on we're back on the podcast, and uh, this is the first time that I've ever had an opportunity to do this particular thing. And and first, I want to I want to credit Doug Hendrickson for the opportunity to do this because I've never interviewed people that had anything to do with like a a politics, but b uh, sports politics. So this is a very big event for the podcast. So first, I would like to introduce. Oh, I would like to introduce Pergo for putting on a pop guard on the microphone. Yeah. But uh, the Lieutenant Governor of California. Yeah, I know. What what, what is that? I don't know that. I no don't one know knows. Yet, What's the Lieutenant Governor? Gavin do? Newsom. Will you tell everybody what it is that you do? No one knows. I'm trying to. I read the obituaries every morning. I see <laughs> the, no, it's true. I see the governor's name. No, I see the governor's names in there. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. That's what a lieutenant governor does. And yeah. otherwise, then you just go back to sleep if the what, governor's what name really doesn't appear. What really is your job? Because when I talk to you, man, you are a, you are so savvy. You know Hardly, what you're doing. Really. Hardly. I mean that, really. I used to no. when I was younger. Come on. In the good old days, when I was mayor of San Francisco. When you were when mayor, you were, you were awesome, but, but, California, but now we're you're doing still right. awesome. No, I'm, it's good. Yeah, no. I'm, so, yeah, lieutenant governor of California. Yeah. A state that's on the ascension, not the decline. Don't believe the pundits. Don't believe the declinists. <laughs> Don't believe the dystopians. You California is You back. are the new, you're the new age of politics. Oh, like a new a, age. You have a great sense of humor. God bless. You uh, you don't yeah. take yourself too seriously. I'm a very serious guy. <laughs> you uh, you have friends that I think are kind of insane. Uh, that's a fact. Which and we'll get it, to them which in a makes minute. Which it Pat. seem like you are yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe you hang out with them because I, you're you like, mean, I have bad judgment is what you're you saying. You have bad judgment. Yeah, thank you. It's but but really you you're really in touch with humans. <laughs> Like, you know, you get me, you get guys that are, you know, billionaires, you get people that, you know, are struggling to pay their yeah, rent. You know, yeah. It's a big deal, Amen. man. It's a really big no, deal. And I'm not saying it. this in a way that is like sarcastic or anything, but just being around you for the little bit that I've been around today, you're such a solid human being. How no, did that happen? How did that happen in the Bay parents, Area? Parents, parents, parents. Yeah. Single mother, 18 years old, divorced to 20. Wow. Two kids. Where? Marin, uh, San Francisco, and she, you know, never complained, just worked her tail off. What did she do? She was a paralegal, part-time real estate agent, waitress. That's how I got in the restaurant business, because she was a waitress. And she just worked her tail off. We were a foster family growing up, and just, she was an amazing role model. She died years and years ago, breast wow. cancer. And that, th there's your answer. I mean, I... 
Yeah, I could over So did you have a father that. figure in your life? Yeah, my dad's an amazing guy, extraordinary guy, was taking care of the rest of his family. He had six brothers and sisters, uh, all of which have passed away. He's still alive. Hmm. And he was taking care of all those folks, 40-plus cousins. Uh, but, it, you know, my mom was an extraordinary rock. And so, you know, work your tail off. Nothing was given. Nothing, I mean, you know, no trust. I mean, we worked our tail off. And so she was an extraordinary example. And what a gift to have that sort of sense of empathy and work ethic as a kid and then be able to get in the political life. I mean, and which is an extraordinary thing. When is your birthday? When is it? Yeah, when, when is your birthday? You, you're 10 10. You're really old October compared to 10th. me, right? No, brother. <laughs> no, but he, honestly, it's a little embarrassing, seriously. I mean, you know, because, you know, seriously. No, it's just a little strange that you're almost my age. It's just awkward, man. man I, I mean, no, you know, you man, can, all, you can act all hip and no, cool, yeah. but it just ain't that. Here's but the thing. But you were like born in the 60s, weren't you? You're were you the, born in the you're 60s? You're in politics. You can like be... Like a Grateful Dead you era, can, right? <laughs> no, seriously. It was like, no, Led Zeppelin wasn't even alive. You can be 200 weird. years old in politics. <laughs> I'm 44 in the yeah, music business. Bad. I'm like it's dead already. No, seriously. It is embarrassing. No, honestly, you're like on your like reunion tour. So what are you guys gonna do that? <coughs> hey, <coughs> yeah, man, no, you're good, so man. mean. It's, it's so it great. I'm glad that you're in your job. Um, so, so just before I get into your history, because it's really intense and really interesting, and and I love your sense of humor, except for the part about breaking my balls. Um, so we're here with. With Doug Hendrickson, as I mentioned before, who is uh, Marshawn Lynch's agent, amazing NFL agent, and you're the way that I got to meet uh, Gavin just today. Yes. And uh, so, what is your relationship with Gavin? What is your relationship with yourself? And how how did you guys how did you guys find each other? Because you seem to be best friends. You know, Gavin's one of my closest friends. I, you know, I met Gavin. By the way, thanks for having me on, Pat. I love your your stuff. You're not in politics, man. You're fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not to the um, I just, but, uh, I'd like to give you my card. I, yeah, yeah. So I met. Uh, I, I probably met Gavin when I was just moved to the city, probably 14, 15 years ago, and we became very close friends. And we were, you know, kind of wingmen together before we got married. Yeah, had some good times back in the day. Who was a better? <laughs> who was a better support figure? For the other getting girls. Oh, that was definitely me. I was I you was much, I was much better oh, no, helping him out. I was much better helping him out. I think. When I look at both of you, I go oh, like, man, I man. don't ever want to be at a bar with either one of you. <laughs> you're like highly. You're very tall way, and very attractive. I know Doug's wife's in the room, so I don't want to go there. But legendary status. <laughs> don't say Doug, that. Doug's That's terrible. legendary status. He's not legendary. Seriously, any guy would live in a hotel for a couple years. <laughs> You uh, live in a yeah. hotel? This guy's living in a hotel. So seven, you're in seven Huntington years, seven, Hotel. Seven years, yes. Seven years. No said, right? <laughs> like, l l l let me just... Although, let me tell you Pat, something, Pat. Seriously. No when said. Gavin was single, he had a no, indoor pool there. in his house. No, that's With a right. movie theater behind the yeah, pool. No, it's delusional. With candle lights That's not true. No, he read that in a book. <laughs> That's not true. With an oak man. tree coming That's up not over true. the roof. This is not true. Okay. It's just not true. You are a serious No, it's not even true. By the way... That was an investment property that we sold, <laughs> and we contributed a lot to charity. That Thank did you. not exist, no, but true. if it did, it was an investment property. I, I will say this. I will say this. Oh, wait, not, not yeah. investment in that way. Thanks. No, but, but I will say this. All sincerely, Gav was one of my closest friends. I love him to death. We've had some great times together, grew up together. Single life together, married life together, a wife very close, no. kids three are kids, best friends, three kids, the whole yeah. day we travel together, the whole deal. But he's great with my clients, Pat. He's fantastic hanging out oh, with guys. Oh, he is. Oh, cool. Him and Marshawn Lynch are really close. Him and my clients are very close, and he's done a great job of really. Well, Marshawn is a Bay Area guy. Yes. So we're Oakland. all like big. Oakland. We're all big fans of his, and we love the whole beast mode. Except for the Falcon Jam in the room here. He's not a big fan. Well, of yeah. I, I want to introduce Thomas next because uh, Thomas <laughs> Dimitrov. Am I saying that right? Dimitrov. There's no Dimitrov. meat in Dimitrov because I do prefer a vegetarian diet. Cool. They, I'm so glad that I cleared that up. So Thomas Dimitrov, like Thomas is one of the sweetest guys I ever met. And I, and I met you because you came uh, and, and saw a train show in Atlanta, which is a great town for us because we made three of our uh, five records there. But I met you through Doug as well. And uh, that when I met you, you couldn't show up with your, your wife because you had just had a baby girl. That's correct. 
And so, how old is your baby now? She is six months old. And uh, and Thomas is the GM of the Atlanta Falcons. And the oldest guy in the room. And the, <laughs> and I'm by just far, saying, by the way, and by, by far, far no, I mean, the oldest you know, guy in the room. Yeah. And, and the, it's going to be a long time between where, yeah. And no, the least old man. studly, according to everything that's going on here, because I've lived a very straight and narrow life. You know, no, but I, you guys are all like good buddies, and, and, <laughs> and it's just, it's kind of, it, it's interesting for me in the music business because the music business is full of a lot of bullshit. Like, there's a lot of guys trying to get into other guys' dressing rooms, like the cool guy. You know, you, you try to get into the cooler guy's dressing room. Everybody's trying to get into Radiohead's dressing room because they're the <laughs> ultimate cool. And you guys kind of eliminate the bullshit of all of that. So is that what it takes to be successful in politics and in sports, is to just quit being full of shit? Or... Are you surrounded by the same stuff I am, and you're just the exemption from the norm? I've been wearing Doug's clothes for years, so I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you know what I'm saying? In, in our, in, before I get to Gavin, in our business in sports, it's full of people, in my opinion, that are insecure, low self-esteem, and all that. I admire Thomas here because he's never been that way. I've never been that way either. So it's like the bottom line is that we have to be able to do our thing, you know, not feel insecure, not feel like we're going to lose guys, a client. You it may guys be. are in control of kids' lives. Like you really are. Being the GM of a major football team and being a, an agent, you have to take care of children, really. I mean, these guys are, some of them come from nothing and you have to like help them be something. And... How do you do it knowing the politics of, if I don't win, it doesn't matter what I do to help these kids. Like, it's got to be a pretty sleepless night kind of lifestyle. No, it's tough. I mean, no question. I mean, you have to tell them the right thing. You have to be a no guy. You can't be a yes guy. And you got to look you know, to the futures for us. You know, if I, help this, if I don't help this kid out... You know, he may be, you know, on a rough path some days, so it's tough. But you have to never have the fear of getting fired. You got to tell the guys the truth. Be honest with them. Otherwise, you know what? What are we doing? And my job is to help them out from day one to hopefully many years down the road to make sure they're on the right path. But that's the hard part. Doug's, it's, Doug's, well, um, excuse me, Doug's no, one of yeah, the, I mean, the best agents out there. I was going to ask, I mean, seriously, yeah. because, I mean, you know, I've seen him in action. Yeah. And so what he just said, I'll say it, is no bullshit. And I've seen a lot of folks in his profession that are all bullshit. So, Thomas, I was going to ask you, seriously, I mean, I, you can indulge because we're right here with you. Yep. But honestly, I mean, you, you see guys like Doug, I mean, his profession every single day. Lots of guys. I, I mean, his, it, his profession has a lot of yeah. bad reputation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guys uh, trying to take advantage of, like, talent. Hands down, one of the best, if not the best, agents. Understanding the players, understanding where their lives are, bonding with them at so many levels, with their parents, with the the kid in, themselves. Um, how how Doug approaches these individuals is is off you know it's off the charts compared to a lot of those guys out there that all they're about is is signing the contract and, right. and making sure they they you know land the next dollar and that's not him I mean this guy goes above and beyond I mean I Shyla's a wonderful wife and a great friend and she has to have a lot of patience with Doug because Doug is always present for his players and his GMs. Unfortunately, <laughs> some are a little bit more high maintenance than, that, maintenance than others. But he's just, she, he's she won't take me as a client to invest my money because I don't make enough money. So I, I'd rather I'd rather just move on and, and not talk about her anymore uh, because she, unless you will take me on as a client, then yeah, no, nope, she's, she's not in. But Thomas, on a serious note, level. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know, does it matter when you guys are signing a player? the quality of an agent in terms of your confidence that the agent can influence the quality of that player. You're no. hired. Thank you. No, sorry, brother. <laughs> no, awesome. just, no, it's no, a great, I mean, it's it's a great I'm question. Interested. I mean, we I have it. that discussion all the time about, okay, who's a player? Who's his agent? One of the first things we do when we look at a free agent, potentially, that's coming up in free agency or uh, you know, an acquisition in the, college, in the college draft, who's the agent? Interesting. Ooh, really? He goes with this guy? Interesting. And mm. we, we discern huh. different things about the player. It's very it's much so like music, that. man. It really is. that is. always the oh, same yeah. way? I remember uh, 
I was signed to Columbia Records when we made Meet Virginia. We made the first album, and I was managed by a Bay Area uh, management company, Bill Graham Management. But my record label didn't love my manager. And so legally, and I'm sure it's the same way for you as a GM, legally you can't tell one of your players who they should have represent them. It's a conflict of interest. You can get sued. It's very, could be bad. Gavin's kind of going, I can get around that. Yeah, no, yeah, I, like I a, know these things. Yeah, can, right. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, change the law. Uh, I have a bill. I have two I bills. Have I do. Bill. I can, I'll sign the bill. I'm going to get to you at the end because you have so much. Like, it's it's so fun. But um, when when I think about music and sports, he, my label guy, my man, my uh, my president was like, hey. How would you like Bruce Springsteen's manager to be your manager? And I was like, uh, I don't know, because I don't know that he would be good at it. And he was like, you'd be good at it. Just shut up. Yes, is the answer, you know. <laughs> but you can't do that. And he really wasn't allowed to do that either. But he got away with it because we had to go through certain ways of, okay, you got to go meet a bunch of people for pretend so that there's no weirdness. And But you can't tell a talented kid that you think has the potential to go a long way to choose the right representation. And you can't match the right representation to the right kid sometimes because they're tied to like some other thing, right? That's correct. I mean, legally, we can't. And, and from, a, from a league standpoint, we're very particular about it. However, when, when certain things mesh and you're in the right situation, right time, and Doug happens to pick up the phone and call that prospect. And, 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 and sometimes if you see a, a prospect, will you say, hey, Doug, there's this kid in Alabama. He's special. Can you go talk to him? Or do you ever get to that or not? I, Doug's usually so far ahead of it because he, he's just so far ahead of the. the next I've known prospects. him for a year. I can't imagine that he's ahead of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is interesting because he really he really is in so many ways. So he'll come to me and talk to me about players who are on the rise. And the great thing is he's got such a reputation in this league and the way that he approaches things and and you know being with the companies he's been with and and all the people he has. It it just it it. It, it, it plays into line and, and people can look at all his clients and say, man, this guy knows what he's doing. And then they meet him yeah. and it's a done deal in my mind because he looks him in the eye, he's honest, he's to the point and, and the parents and everyone just jumps in. I can say, hey, I'll tell you what, Doug Hendrickson, the best out there, I don't even need to get there because the guy, usually the player says to me, I'm basically already signed with this guy. Hmm. So I want to do all I can to endorse Doug, and I know it's a it's a fine line, and I can't How do many that. Doug Hendricksons are there in the NFL uh, agency business? <laughs> I think it's rare. I think there are a handful of guys that are of, of his makeup. How and many his people approach. are better than him? And, <laughs> and is there anybody I can get a podcast with right now that could be better than that? Doug? Is that what you're yeah, asking for? By the way, I'm going to actually take, I'm going to refund Thomas's fees because he said such nice things today. So. <laughs> well, no, what I'm recognizing about all of you is that, you know, you, you're all, you're all friends, but, and, and as much as we're in our 40s, there's a new world of... Young 40s. Of, there's there's uh, a what? young Sorry. way of thinking yeah. of things. Like, yeah. And I, I mean that, like, I'm not being facetious. No, like, in, in my world of music... If you're not thinking that kids have a say, if you're not listening to kids' music and following what they're following, you're dead. Of course. And you're going to be the guy that goes, oh, I'm a victim, and music sucks, and radio is bleh, and, I can, and it's bullshit. <laughs> like, but the truth is, is that you can't keep competing because you stop listening. And so it sounds like you guys all listen. And so these guys yeah. are in sports and they're taking care of kids, but you're in politics and you're yeah. taking care of be a lot more than just kids. Yeah. Like people are looking at you to hopefully lead them down a road to a better place, like a you better know, California. You might, I, when you say what you're saying, it reminds me of the, the great Bobby Kennedy, my political hero. I love Bobby Kennedy. My literally, my political mentor hero. In abstentia, by definition, passed away so many years ago, for uh, literally a year after my birth. And he said, what the world needs are the qualities of youth, not a time of life, but a state of mind, a quality of imagination. And I completely concur with that. Regardless of your age, sort of maintain that sort of willingness to, the, to 
be creative, to be be open minded, not be rigid, not ideological, be open to argument, interested in evidence, uh, and as my mom used to say, to your point, seek first to understand, then to be understood. This fundamental notion. It's seek first very rare. To understand, like you know, kids today, and I've talked to a lot of musicians that, and and, and maybe you see this in your world, but musicians or, or not musicians, but kids go to famous people and they go, how do I get famous? Yeah. They don't say, how do I get amazing at this instrument? Yeah. Or how do I be great at writing songs? Or how do I be yeah. a great actor? They go, yeah. how do I be famous? You know what? It, and that's a terrible question. Horrible. You know what? And I think about that in politics too. Th this whole idea that you have to be something to do something. You know, you think about, we just lost Nelson Mandela and everyone's reflecting on his life. You know what? No one, I mean no one, I've challenged everyone, tell me two or three policy things he did as president of South Africa. No hmm. one can do it. His entire life, his legacy was not in formal authority. It wasn't when he was president. He didn't need to be something, to do something. His entire life was defined by 27 years in prison and what he stood for, standing up in terms of his moral authority. And you start thinking back in the biggest change agents in the world, Martin Luther King, wasn't president ex-president Martin Luther King, we were celebrating in the march to Washington right. just a few months back. We weren't celebrating the life of Gandhi as a former prime minister, Cesar Chavez in California right. as an ex-governor. They represented and, the people. Yeah, they stand on principle. And so my whole point is, you know, I see kids all the time, to your point about being famous, or oh, well, one day if I'm mayor, or governor, president, then I'll do something. It's nonsense. It's about exercising your moral authority. And everyone has the capacity to do extraordinary things. And now, with the tools of technology to can do it. Speak is crazy. Pat, this is the reason like, they I mean, come just on the listening podcast. to you this right now, I want to like freaking I want to hug you and say, <laughs> "Here's <laughs> all my money. Tell me what <laughs> to do." <laughs> There's caps and what, contributions. What is so I your can't take all of What it. is your goal? Like, what do you want in the I end? I want to make a difference. I want to... I want but to, really, you know, where do you want to get uh, to to make a difference? I don't need, to, I don't need to get anywhere. I just want to... I, I, you know what? I want to be an example. I think my greatest frustration, you know, ten, you know, it's interesting. We're literally sitting here today. It's 10 years ago, this week, when I was mayor of San Francisco, and we decided to marry 4,036 couples from 46 states and seven countries, same-sex marriages. And it was and, audacious and, how much and of that? How much of that were you... How much... I always wonder, who's at the tippy top? Who's the guy or the girl who says, this is so outrageous. We have to make a change. Yeah. I'm the one who's allowed to make a change. Here's my name signed on the dotted yeah, line. Yeah, but I wasn't allowed. I didn't have the right to do it. It broke the law. My chief of staff was vehemently opposed. And I'm not even, I, I'm not reflecting on it. Any, I'm not patting it. I'm just saying, you know what? Damn it. If you believe in something, stand for something. Step up and step in. Try to make a damn difference. How could you be so against you, anything big? Like, it just sounds so... Well, I mean, how, trust me, everyone was against it 10 years ago. I mean, right. the current president was yeah, against it 10 years ago. I mean, I won't even go into the details. My only point, I'm not saying this for any other... But I'm trying to answer your previous question about, you know, what I want to do. So I want to step up. up. No, I want to step up and step in, you know, on things that I believe in. And good people can disagree. But I guess... Again, I'm not ideological. I want to be open to argument, interested in whatever you have in mind. I want to learn from that. But just, I just think we're, there's a desperate need for folks just to step in and lean into the world we're living in, as opposed to equivocate and just sort of go along to get along to sort of move up in life. And the world, we can't afford that anymore. So I, I, that's, that's what I want to be. And, you know, I don't know where the hell that leads me. I may not be in politics, could be out of politics, but I just think that's a better way to live life. You know, politics to me is a, such an interesting thing. I, I, I think of, and I don't mean any disrespect at all. I know we've had a lot of comedy tonight, but um, <laughs> I don't mean this disrespectful, but I always no think of... No one's ever been disrespectful of a politician. So, no, 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 yeah. I've, I know that. So but, thank you for um, being sober. But, no, I think that. about... I think about when I think about politics and politicians, it seems like the ones that I've seen in my life 
have spent more time trying to get the job than doing Amen. something positive. Makes me and sick. so I don't know right. how or to keep the job after they get it. Right. Which and is then, even yeah, worse. You spend the next so four they have years. What, they have a private conversation. They don't say anything publicly. If you support the death penalty, you're against it, but you don't say what you really think publicly because you're worried about the pillar. Right. Part. That's the stuff that drives me crazy, man. There's a lot of that. And so what is... Drives how, me crazy. How do you... By the way, I'll give you a perfect contemporary example. Legalizing marijuana. It's a tough issue. I love I, marijuana. I know you do. And I got three kids, and I'm, you know, I'm a little they worried about. They love marijuana. They don't. They're they're four years old, two well, and gonna. six they're months. Gonna, it's right. fine. So I hope the hell they don't. But my point only is this, you know what? It's just that that's a classic issue. I, I support taxing, regulating. I mean, Washington State, obviously Colorado. But I there's, I kid you not. I'm not exact. I mean, this may sound audacious. I swear to you. Republican, Democrat, and I know a ton of them all across the country. I've met only a few that disagree with that point hmm. of view. And 99.9% of them won't say it publicly. Drives really, me crazy. they won't say it publicly. Say it publicly. Every single damn one of them that I work with in the legislature in the state of California, is that trust because, me, I know their position. Is that because they won't old say people publicly. watch CNN and old people no, they are... They just care about like, more, care about understand. their damn careers... And playing it safe, and they're not willing to put it all on the line. And you know what? I get that, and they're rewarded for that. But we're not, as you know, as taxpayers, as citizens, we're not rewarded for that because that's not leadership. I'm not going to ask you if you've ever and by smoked way, good pot. People, no, I'm not. It's not my. You know what's interesting? It's not my thing. It's, never been my I'm, thing. And I'm sure that you've never done it. But and I, I do you know I people who believe. do? Do you know people who like I'm marijuana? I'm not sure I can look around the room and suggest. As an agent, <laughs> as an, as an, have as you an ever, agent I'm all for legalization. Have, have you I'm ever known guy. any person to smoke, the United States. to smoke pot and do anything either dangerous to themselves or yeah. other people? I mean, I, I love what President Obama said. It's 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 not as harmful. It's equally as harmful as alcohol, meaning there's no, no distinction. I don't think it's as harmful as alcohol. To wit, you know, it's interesting. I, and, and and he got criticized because it's alcohol's exponentially worse. Alcohol makes point. people like shoot things Thank and you. like yeah. people and no. and crash Prescription cars. And drugs are worse. Alcohol is worse. It. And we legalize that, but somehow we're incarcerating African Americans, Latinos, poor folks. And yep. Put it, and it's an outrage. Honestly. That's right. It's an out, man. Let me tell you something. I, I am. Uh, I'm so impressed with all of that, and I and I know no, that frustrating. And, and honestly, it, no, but it's it's a, it for a topic that people love to sort of belittle. Yeah, it's a serious damn topic. Seriously, how real does, lives? How do you impacted. guys feel? And the NFL because has got yeah, a big yeah, this is a big. That. And how do you feel about you, sticking up for your players and saying, "Look, guys, like marijuana is not going to intensify their play. Like a lot of these guys like to get off the field and smoke a joint and just be like, "Man, just let me just go, just stay out of my life. Like I'm not taking enhancement drugs. I just want to." Like, I got my head knocked in today. Can't I just sit down and instead I have a glass of wine? These kids are, you know, they're just trying to loosen up after a game. They're not taking enhancement drugs. These are not drugs to make them bigger and stronger and faster and all that other. It's just giving them a break. And a guy like me is, I'm very high strung. So if I smoke pot, it gives me a chance to, like, take a break from my own bullshit. Like, really? And so I can imagine as an NFL player, as any ball player, and I know a lot of M MLB players, I mean, all those guys smoke pot. I mean, they got weed in the dugout, man. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, but so in the NFL, it seems like it's really a serious subject that these kids are like, man, if you get caught smoking weed, you're going to be in trouble and you might lose your, you know, you might not be able to play for two weeks or two years. And some of these kids are losing their jobs. A lot of these guys were basically saying, a lot of ex-players were a little more honest about it, saying, you know, I had a concussion and they gave me a big bottle of pills and I don't want to take the pills. I, you know what? That's not right. my thing. That's not and my so thing. so I smoked, and it made me feel better, and right. I'm now breaking the damn rules. Right. And the NFL's encouraging me, and not <laughs> yeah, you know, not it, in, it a, in a negative funny. way, but I mean, they're just... And so it was... It was a p and then they also made the point about seventy five percent. Remember the end of that piece. Seventy five percent of the folks that were in the draft probably wouldn't be eligible if they were testing. Well, what a lot of people understand is like even I remember last year uh, Thursday night game Niners Seattle. 
I saw Marshawn at lunch. He could barely get out of his car. Right. Because he Medicine was just lunch, so could barely, beat up could from the game. Move. Now, the next game was seven days later. Right. Now, where the NFL rules are, if the, if the doc was going to give him a Vicodin or a Percocet from the team, he has to take that within about three hours. If he takes it the next day and he's tested, he tests positive for, for narcotics. Wow. So if Marshawn felt, you know what, I don't need this drug today, but I may need when it tomorrow. When I wake up tomorrow, I might not up. be able to move. I got to have And he tests it. positive the next day. He tests positive. So I look back to, to smoking weed. When my dad was dying of cancer when he was 38 years old, they gave him cutting edge. Yeah. They gave him pot to smoke. So I'm in the house. He's smoking because it helped his body out. These NFL players, and Thomas, you know this, your GM, a little bit you know, different. But these guys need to smoke pot to get through from week to week. It's better than going on binges of Hennessy and Jack and vodka, getting in their and cars Vicodin. driving. If these guys, Viking, if these guys just sit in their house, smoke some weed, get their bodies relaxed, not leave the house, and get right for the next week, I see nothing wrong with it. It is better than drinking, Pat, like you said. It, it, it makes sounds, no sense. It's it not legal. It sounds so like if, if, if you have a guy that has a drinking problem, you're probably going to want to have a conversation with him. But unfortunately... They're not going to call them out on it. They're just going to be like, well, drinking's legal, so the guy yeah, can get right. hammered before and after the game because we're not going to test for that. That's the unfortunate part about all of it. Well, that's exactly right. Even at the combine, and Thomas, you know, he's one of the guys that's asking the guys questions. At the combines, the players get 15 minutes. And if someone's known to smoke weed in college, have you smoked pot? How much do you smoke pot? Do you have a problem? Uh, oh, you really? smoke every day. But no one asks, do you drink? Do you, oh, mean, that's so funny. You know, so it's, it's that inherent problem. So we coach our guys to tell them if they say you smoke pot, how often, when's the last time, the whole deal. And yes, you there's times. to say the right thing. Huh? Right. Well, yes. Yeah, and well. there's times we've told them to, you know what, yeah, don't be completely truthful. Yeah. Maybe let them know what was last week. You do that? <laughs> like, wait a minute. We would never do that. An agent, I get. I mean, Thomas just, is, yeah, no, Thomas is so hurt right now. Oh, my Thomas goodness. is shocked. Well, you know, I'm in dead. my business, uh, uh, Doug, was at, Doug was at the Howard Stern birthday bash earlier with me. By the way, Dave, what a part of that was. Dave Dave Gross. Gross. I was not, for and, the record. Oh, no, you weren't no, invited. God, thank you. No, I wasn't no. even invited. No, I, had I known <laughs> you at that point. As a politician. Had I known you at that point, you would have been the first one I invited. I would have made sure Doug did not get a bracelet. Oh, um, that is no, a but nice what, bracelet. What Doug got to see was Dave Grohl say, I only get hammered when I'm working. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my business is, couldn't be, like, it's like, uh, we did a drug test, sir, and you came in negative. So, yeah, you're not going to be able to work tonight. <laughs> it's like, that's a that's crazy difference between, but there's not much difference overall. I mean, artists and athletes, we have this thing, and our brains work in one specific way where I, I don't know how to explain it, but we're probably not good at other things. Like most of your athletes, Marshawn Lynch, for instance, he's amazing on the field, and he doesn't really want to talk to people, and he might not be the best guy to represent himself even as a spokesman. Yeah. Just let him not do it. Yeah. Like... Let them go. Like, let them have that. Let them be an artist. Like, you have to understand, sometimes athletes are artists. Yeah. Like, my managers, they're like, man, so, sometimes you're so logical and you have these business conversations with us. We forget you're an artist, so we tell you that you suck sometimes. And we need to not tell you that. We need to stop telling you you suck. Like, that's good advice for yourself. You should not do that. But there is a... There is art to what you do, and there's art to what you do. Like, as... As a politician, and it's probably even a bad word in a lot of ways to you. Politician? Because, yeah, I mean, that sounds... I like I mean, art, but not politician. Art sounds great, I right? I love art. <laughs> but see, when, when I think like Thomas and I, and probably Doug as well, when we listen to you speak, it sounds like art. Yeah. Like, you're a poet. I mean, you know, you're a modern day, like, I know how to say what I want to say, and I have the vocabulary to do it, and I can move people. That's a very rare thing, dude. Mm. Like, that's something you need to never stop doing. <laughs> even... If you don't have like whatever the, the 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 even if you don't know where you're headed, don't stop doing that. Yeah, because that's a big thing. That's that. a very rare thing. So I I really 
I'm I'm really interested in in knowing what's next for you as oh, I don't know as the lieutenant governor and what you're trying to get done in the time that you have left. You know, you just you reminded me when you were talking, and, the, the, and as a good you know ex mayor of San Francisco, um, and I, I love to quote Jerry Garcia because what other politician could get away with quoting Jerry Garcia? Yeah, except an ex mayor of San Francisco, <laughs> and uh, and he, he had a great quote. He said, you don't want to be the best of the best. Hmm. You want to be the only one that does what you do. Ah, Which I love. You don't want to be the to best of the best. You want to be yeah. the only one. Meaning, each, you know, all of us have our expressions unique. Hmm. Your expression, everyone has that capacity to flow with the forces of life to be fully expressive. And so it's all about being expressive, not being like, learn from, but don't follow others. And uh, it's, you know, Steve Jobs talked about it forever. He says, we don't want to be better than our competition. We want to be different. And I just think, that, you know, at the end of the day, just allow your expression to come forth. Be yourself. And don't be fearful about that. Uh, and I think, honestly, I mean, seriously, look, the only reason I'm here is because that's Doug. I want, I want to hang out with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guy's authentic. He's a real deal. And he's probably buying. And he's probably buying, too. <laughs> Of course he is. And Thomas, the same thing. And I mean, hell, I think it's why we're all here, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a, what, serendipity. I mean, there's a reason we're all sitting around here. And so I just, I mean, I think that's important. I think everyone gets caught up in trying to be famous, as you were saying earlier, trying to be something, to do something, all these things. And we talk about all these fancy folks, yeah. Marshawn. You don't have to be like these people. You, you can don't. learn from, you don't have to, but you just so. Like, I think life, of Marshawn you know? as a leader. Like, he's yeah. he's leading for the new kid that doesn't want to talk. And the NFL is going to have to give into it. They're going to have to say, Okay, well, then we have to have a certain percentage of your team that speaks because we know that those kids are out there, you know. Hey, man, I, I saw Goodell tonight, Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner, yeah. and I gave him, I literally gave him a hard time about Marshawn. Yeah. I said, Roger, in my business... Because when Marshawn it, is when, a Bay Area guy, man, Bay Area, so. Oakland kid. I said, why are you giving him such grief? And where, wh I mean, your biggest problem is NFL stars talking too much. And saying the wrong things. Amen. Now you're so we're talking about finding a guy yeah. that does everything right, everything is right, playing by the rules, and is just someone that's just a little awkward and don't want to actually get in that. And uh, and, and you want to penalize? I him. won't. And I won't say what he. I mean, I'm a big Roger Goodell fan, so it was an interesting conversation. I won't speak out of school, but but you know what? Anyway, to your point, what makes Marshawn unique? is that his expression is unique yeah. and he's not following others. And I think that's a fabulous thing. And I think it's why everyone's fascinated by this guy. And it's a good lesson in life for everyone listening. You just simply, just be yourself. No one else has your unique expression, period, exclamation. No one in the world has it. So be yourself. Be the only one that's doing what you're what doing. What you're doing. And that's, again, and. You know, you're the music officer, but that's the dead. They were sure they sure as hell weren't the best X Y Z. But man, no one was doing what they did. Right, that's right. The Grateful Dead. You know, there's there's a culture that they created that they were the beginning of building a culture. Yeah, like yeah, that's true. It doesn't even have to be about music. It's a culture that you're yeah. building, and then you know, so many of us. So the last thing I'd like to do is just to wrap it up. Is my wife always asks a few questions, and I like to ask you those questions if you don't mind. Uh, one of them is uh, boxers. Sorry, no, she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't care about that. Uh, she, yeah, no, so that's weird. But uh, <laughs> what she does want to know is, with people who like to travel, what's the best thing you found on the road? That These guys like, are on the road all the time. Let's yeah. hear the NFL guys. Go. Well, I'll let Thomas go first. At, you know, as an ex-scout, Thomas traveled 275 days a year. Is that correct? Oh, my yeah. God, road, dude. You were a scout? In his VW bug. Yes. What the van <laughs> And all that. So you've seen it yeah. all, bro. I mean, from the... <laughs> the Boise, Idaho to Sioux Falls, South Dakota to oh. you know Topeka, Kansas. Dude, it's it. about thread count. You become <laughs> you become you become a hotel snob. And it's about thread count. Hey, before, before we go any further on thread count, Jerry Garcia was also quoted as saying "sans souci," right? No problem, right? I mean, all of this that we're talking about, yeah. it's it's in the end. I mean, yeah. what what really are we talking about here? We're talking about 
back to what you mentioned about Doug. It's talking about good people, good souls. We can surround ourselves with the right people, surround ourselves with the right players, have the right locker room, yeah. and, and win a lot of football games, th- thrive in the political arena, thrive as an agent. Thrive as a musician, which you do, which you're awesome. I mean, we would all say... But if you win, Hmm. I guess what we all have in common, just from the little bit that we've been together, is there's an ends justifies the means that we don't live by. Ends do not justify the means in in our personalities. Well done. Because that means that we're willing to win at any cost. And that just doesn't sound like any of us. True. And that sounds like the new way of doing business. Like, if you sacrifice a kid, one kid, to win, you're not going to be okay with yourself. And so, yeah, everything's cool, but we do have a response. And you know what's interesting about that is that I I honestly got to believe this. Knowing these guys as well as I do... Your mom would look down on you and grab you by the ear. Mm-hmm. My dad would grab you by the neck. <laughs> and I know your dad would too. And honest to God, I think of that whenever I think about, okay, do I cut this corner to get a kid, whoever it may be? And I say I can't do it because you know what? I, I have an oath to the families I represent, the kids I represent, yeah. and for what I do. And I can't ever see a kid 10 years down the road or five years down the road saying, you know what, Doug? You did this to me and here where I'm at. So that I, I think of that all the time from above, and that's that's real, and I and yeah. all that. So, per, per, so, so if I could say one one last thing too, our f- family mantra has become soar, savor, and share. And to me, it's about achieving. And, and, and just striving as much as you can, savoring it, because it's all about enjoying the ride, right? The journey. Yep. And, and if you can share it with people, man, you've, you've, that's a trifecta. To be able to share all of your successes, all of what you've learned, and, and share it with the people around yeah. you that mean something, yep. to me, that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful life. I think, <clears throat> like, I, I'll just say this, like, I think really these kids are really lucky to have you as an agent, Doug, and, and I think the Falcons are really lucky to have you as a GM. And I think California's like in for a real big ride, man. I think no, it might end no, up being the president of the United States. Hardly, but and if you do, it. man, you better drink some wine with me and smoke some weed. <laughs> I want to be on the cover of Time Magazine smoking a blunt with you. <laughs> Legal bitches! Um, no, but seriously, just to get to the last few questions. Uh, that was just the end of the political career. That's good. Yeah, that just ended your political career. <laughs> Not people editing this thing. No, but, no, no, Pat, like, but Pat, Ga- Gavin's, Gavin's a rock star. No, Look, yeah, there's, there's are, not a politician out there that's got his energy, he's got his mindset, <laughs> he's got anything with him, and he will be president. Trust me, he Early. is that damn good. Tough job. Who wants no, that? you have a tough. And you know what? But we we have a responsibility to ourselves beyond anybody else, and that responsibility is you got to do your best work, man. You got to like show up every day and work harder than everybody else, and take care of people because. If you don't, you're just not going to be cool with yourself because, you, like you said, the people that have come before us, you're disrespecting them. And the people that will come after us, we all have children, yep. you're disrespecting them. And so, anyway, to uh, on a lighter note, uh, is there something – I didn't get to know what you're a fan of, or I mean uh, what, what a good tour find was from uh, – We had – what was this shri- – Thread count? Thread count Sheets. from Thomas. Uh, yeah, right. What about you, Doug? <laughs> yeah, come a on. A good, man. something uh, you, when you travel, you go to? Uh, I'm a hotel snob, so no matter where I go, I seek out the best boutique hotels. And uh, and that's what I do. So literally, I mean, I, I love to find the best boutique hotel, whether it's Lincoln, Nebraska, to... So boutique meaning you, you don't want a guy with a top hat. You want a small, <laughs> great bed. You I'm want not, a great I'm, hotel, yeah. small with a great bed. I'm not a Marriott, not a Hyatt, not a Hilton. I want a really cool, small yep. boutique brand. I'm, and I'm I, I will spend not that hours there's anything wrong with find that, right? the right, right hotel. Not that there's anything wrong with those big no. chains. And, top but, hats are great, yes. but no. But that's and my then, goal. I can't uh, even compete with you. I just go up and down on Southwest and LA, just, How about like a mission? How about a mission burrito? Well, I know, a Chipotle burrito from burrito. I don't know. I mean, I'm saying, well, 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 mission. Not if you, not if you, you have a I mission. I mean, you remember your old city, San Francisco? Oh, you don't actually, hurt oh, me. You actually remember don't the mission? Me. You I actually love the remember? Mission. Yeah, that's good that you remember it. 
I'm Mr. Seattle. I'm Dotties. just saying. That no, just makes me feel Dotties. good. You know, okay, yeah. Do but, you ever go to Dottie's? I mean, give me a break, man. I'm the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just impressed. You give remember all this break. stuff. I didn't thought you'd ever get it. Unbelievable. Said, I'm the mayor. Yeah, right. You're all not this the mayor. I was the mayor, whatever. You know, <laughs> Mr. San Francisco. Oh, man. Unbelievable. I'm looking for it a place is. in no, the Valley if you're listening to this. I know. Uh, we're going to get you a place uh, there. What are you it's guys good. a fan of? Is there something you're a fan of right now, like a TV show or uh, a record, a player? Like something that you could tell listeners about that they should be fans of as well? A wine? Oh, I ain't going there. Doug, who, who, Gavin, you make wine, man. Tell I know, us about I know, that I'm for one second. Self, I mean, no. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm... What are those wines I got into that politics. I, 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 right out of college, I opened a little wine store in San Francisco. And we so got, cool, man. And it's, it's wild now with 17 businesses. About a thousand folks that we employ. It's just amazing how it's just. And there was no intentionality. There was no strategic plan. You're it was like a small Adam Levine. Little business. You're like Adam Levine. Wow. You're like you're crazy good looking. <laughs> you play guitar like you're in Led I Zeppelin. Am, I know my you guitar. You sing like is a huge. genius. And no, you're, it's true. In your yeah, heard political. Me Awesomeness. Yeah. No, but I like, appreciate the guitar why do you, reference because that's do big to me. Great looking people get all of the talent. No, it's good. I'm left handed, that's why. Oh, well, that's that makes it. sense. It's my all wife about is my too. Are you, I mean, you forgot his hair, Pat. Well, you guys, all three of you guys. Doesn't are, it make you nuts I that he's nuts. like, oh, oh we employ, I employ 10,000. No, I didn't, I didn't say that to impress <laughs> you, but I'm impressed. I mean, no, it's just, you're just my like, passion, man. I love, so I love good. entrepreneurial energy. But anyway, we're in the wine business. Yeah, wine Got business. a few wineries in Napa. That's great. So I love that. But I'm going to self-promote. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I just did. Just but so, I ain't going to do it anymore. No, but just Plum tell Jack people what your wines are that you like. <laughs> tell people what your wines are and then maybe what like a couple of favorite wines are for them to go seek out. No, I mean, we, we, in Napa, there's so many opportunities. But we, we're in the Oakville Cross. We're a little winery called Plump Jack, one called Cade. Uh, up in Howl Mountain and a little one in Stag's Leap called Odette. But, you know, it's just, come on, it's, Napa it's Valley. So great, it's Napa man. Valley. Napa what do you Valley. Want? All it's the wines. It's good as it gets. So nice. Please. People, you know, I've read, I've read a lot of uh, things lately about wine, and they say that uh, consistently the best wine in the world is still France. Do you agree? What? I couldn't believe it either. Wait a second. You know where I, I, I named my winery Odette? In 1970, there were famous Paris tasting. California put its wines up against Paris, and the in Paris against the greatest French wines, and this was this is when California just you know rocked it. Right. And we had two wines, Stag's Leap Winery and Chateau Montalena, in this double blind tasting that beat out the greatest French wines in the seventies. It was so infuriating for the French that one of the The French tasters, really like us, by they the were, way. I mean, man, they just, they freaked out. So one of the tasters was named Odette. Hmm. She went back oh. and was caught trying to change her scores because she was so humiliated. So what did I call the winery? Our winery? You? Odette. After her, <laughs> because we're in the states, it just right back I at you. I was a that's prick. what I'm saying. <laughs> you no, are awesome. I'm just, it's just a little reminder. You know what I'm Man, saying? You that's know? amazing. When I go there, you want to be competitive. We're happy to be competitive. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. It's all Man, love. Lots of love. You might be the greatest person that ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, what are you a fan of, man? What do you got going on right now? Look, this is about... Who do you want to win the Super Bowl, man? Oh, yeah. Oh. What's up, Thomas? <laughs> Can I wait? You asked, you asked He's trying to recruit <laughs> players from both teams. Yeah. You, you asked me first who am I a fan of or yeah. what am I a fan oh, yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Look, we all know we all are major fans of Train, and I'm not. This oh, is thanks, not a, a cheesy true, segue. This that is, is legit. Oh, thanks. I was true. out in Atlanta recently. I don't know if true. you guys knew this. My my man here was in here with some of the the was the, the Greg, Greg Allman, Allman yes Martina McBride I yeah. mean incredible talents yeah. this cat gets out there and rocks the house yeah. with the strongest voice in the house yeah. I thought it was amazing and oh, Angelina thanks, and I man. my wife we we're sitting there watching this incredibly beautiful you all have such beautiful wives yeah. I definitely have the most beautiful wives. <laughs> I'm, so sorry. I'm so sorry with our father I'm right so over here sorry <laughs> yeah. So, point being that you know, you're, where where I think you know a lot of us are with with music and how yeah. that's so important for us to it lose important. ourselves when we're driving forty miles yeah. to Flowery Branch from downtown Atlanta. I'm thinking, man, 
help me get through this. What do right. I throw on? I mean, I throw oh, on you. Oh, cool, I throw man. on training. Thank I you. think about it. And we've talked a lot about that. So well, thanks. I will say that that's, that's a really cool thing. And, and thanks for being a part of our yeah, lives man, I, in your own way. I really appreciate that. Wow. That's super kind. I, I'm I take, with Thomas, brother. I I'm serious, what I man. Do, I take what seriously. I do very seriously. Like, I, it's very stressful for me. I get sick almost every album cycle because I let the stress kind of get me. And so... Uh, like, I want to do good work. Right. You know, just like we all want to, like, do our best work. I just go, like, man, I, I'm terrible. I need to and stop And how much doing is this. it? I mean, seriously, 10 years ago, music industry is one thing. Steve Jobs comes up with this thing called iTunes. The yeah. whole damn thing changes. Yep. We're not buying albums like we were. We're nope. buying songs. How has it changed for you? I'm way into it because I believe in, you know, transformation. Like, you, you need to transform into whatever the world is that you're living in. And I know a lot of people hanging on to the past. Yeah. And it's like, I, I was going through a, a divorce years ago, and, and my manager was like, hey, I know that you're mad, and you want to go talk to the judge and tell him some shit, but nobody's going to feel bad for a rich guy. And that's what all these musicians need to remember. Yeah. Like, all they're like, oh, I'm not making those millions that I used to make. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, why would I care? Like, nobody's going to feel right. bad for that. So I think if you can get a lot of music for free, Pergo, that guy steals more music than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> that was a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pergo like, per 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 looks like a thief, too. He's, got, he's wearing all yeah. black. He's yeah, in the you corner. You can go to jail what for he it. He'd be, like, in <laughs> 40 beard. years, like, <laughs> to life. He's stealing music right now. <laughs> he's stealing music right right now. <laughs> but, like, why wouldn't you? If you have access to it, a guy like me is like, man, I don't even care anymore. Just, I just want somebody to hear me. Like, there's right. so many choices. Just listen. If you want to come to a show and you want to spend the ten bucks, that's awesome. You know, that's where I'm at. Um, so, everybody, gave me what their no, opinion Doug of uh, Doug no, did, Doug. right? What do you What do you got for your uh, your your? You, well, you said you're a hotel guy. So, uh, uh, yeah, or, I'm a hotel you, what guy. What are you a fan of? No, you know what? I'm, I'm a honestly, like Gavin yeah, said, and this sounds. Sappy, but I'm a fan of genuine people that really honestly do, uh, you know, care and, and are doing the right thing. I mean, that sounds stupid. It's a bad It's answer. so stupid it's and sappy. So it is kind of pathetic, right? <laughs> That's a dumb answer. That's a dumb answer. It's so lame get on to be sensitive and <laughs> yeah. sweet. Yeah, this is right a right podcast. Yeah, come on, you in football. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, it's, man. It's, you know, it would be interesting for people to listen to this. How do you guys feel about your children playing football? <laughs> not a chance. Not going to happen. Never. Why? Are Why you not? kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Come like, on, I mean, listen to these two. My father-in-law, Charlie, is over right here, there. My wife son over here will plays never, college football. Yeah, my what wife, you know? who's sitting in the corner here, will never let my son play football. Why? It's, it's brutal. I, look, I do it for a living. I get it, but I will not let him play. Just too many. I mean, look, the chance of him playing pro football are slim and none. So him to even go to high school and play in college to get beat up and head injuries and injuries, all that stuff, it's not worth it to me. Hmm. He's got what do you options. recommend to Charlie, who's got a son at Cal Lou playing? Uh, he's playing defensive back, but they're probably going to move him to linebacker. Baseball or basketball? Hmm. And he's good at both of those too. Cal Lutheran is. I mean, no offense. There's not been a pro pro <laughs> Don't go gym, there. <laughs> pro player out of Cal Lutheran. So I would say different sport. Really? Yeah. Wow. Thomas, what do you think? Okay, this is going to be fairly political. Um, we have a fantastic. <laughs> we have a f fantastic competition committee. I will uh, honestly. I do want to. I want to talk about this and yeah. and, a, and a commissioner who understands yeah. the importance of doing what is right. I love the sport. It's been my livelihood from the day I was born. My father being a coach and a scout and a personnel man and myself and wonderful things have happened to me and Doug. We, we, we realize that. And I realize that there's, there's got to be a way to play such a great sport in a more safe way. So I'm hoping with right. our foresight and our understanding of concussions and how we're dealing with head trauma and other trauma, that you know that we're able to you know pull ourselves through this and 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 be right about this. So it's, it's such a different yeah. game than it used to be because it is. when it's, when you were just wearing leather on your head, nobody would smash their heads into each other because it was like I'm not an yes. idiot, you yes. know I've got leather on my head. But now that you have protection, 
people really risk their lives. And then you have two guys slam each other. It's a, I mean, I sometimes struggle watching the game. But now we know now, which, which I think is amazing, is we understand neuroplasticity. I'm, I'm not a brain surgeon. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> Basically, yeah, means that everything that you've done to your brain, well, you, history of you, can, you can improve yeah. your brain. It doesn't matter if we're 44, 46, or 47, that we know that we can continue to train our brains and, and, and improve our brains, not only because you put yourself through things by having wine or whatever else you do, um, you know, that you mentioned earlier, but, but we can improve our brains. So I guess what I'm saying in the end is, I really believe that we're going to become more and more intelligent with our approach to this game because it is a wonderful sport. It's a fantastic sport. It in so really many ways. is fun, but I, I worry yeah. about these. And there's not, Pat. There's no sport like it. I mean, football. Look, we're here at the Super Bowl. There's nothing like it. The World Series, dull. NBA Finals, <laughs> dull. Hold I, the, on. The NFL. But you just nothing. recommended somebody to uh, you know, send his kids I to like MLB. Back to the Giants like, winning there's a couple World I Series in the last few years. I'm awesome. Just saying, but like, there's I'm nothing saying. like same as San Francisco, yeah. bitches. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, didn't she want the train to play at the parade and they didn't show up or something like that? Or, or yeah, that I can't remember. Oh, and they didn't that show up. That's they real nice. Why Why you guys up? are really making what us close. What's up? Well, yeah, what? It didn't, Why? Why speechless all of a sudden, huh? It didn't really go that way. You know, I uh, I really like you guys, and and you're hurting my feelings, and I'm mad at you. I'm really. Right now, oh, no, Pat. In all honesty, we're we're big fans. Here, By the way, we're, we're here. I, mean, I just want to make sure that I finish up the right way because there's just a couple more things before you split, and I know when you split, we're probably never going to see each other again because <laughs> this is very, very a bad ending, terrible ending. It's like a car crash. Oh my god, that guy. Um, and but what were you going to say, Doug? You were going to say something nice about me, and I don't want to yeah. interrupt with that. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask why you do this because yes. it's a big deal i i know that we probably i'm not sure if any of us need the money anymore but you reach a, a point in your life where you go like i gotta do this because it yeah. i either a i don't know what i am without it or whatever the thing is w why do you keep going gavin no i i honestly i just want to inspire i just want to create a spark to inspire other people just to you know, to be themselves. Do you feel like you're doing that? You know, I, you're, I, a, you're a pretty humble guy, so do you feel like that. you're making an impression? I, I, sometimes I do, sometimes I think I'm being completely, you know, I mean, just, yeah, no. 90% of the time I don't think. Hmm. Then sometimes I'm like, man, just feel like, you know, you're congruent. You're going down the right road. You're know, like, ah, it just feels right. Yeah. And, I, and you can feel that. I mean, it must be, I mean, I think one of the extraordinary gifts for you is you, you know that when you put a great performance on and the crowd's into it and they feel it and they become part of that experience. And, you know, I like to think that sometimes when I'm saying what I think and there's an intensity and purposefulness behind it, uh, that, that it extends beyond me and can have an impact on other people's lives. And right. that's what I live for, mm. literally. Right. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this. I won't waste my time. And, and you uh, have to yeah. keep going. You can't have that. Uh, uh, you know, it's like a fire that lives inside you. How about yeah. you, Thomas? Like, like, why do you keep going, man? Why are you doing this? Well, I, I mean, I want to go on record for saying I do continue to need money. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important. I'm renegotiating his contract. I don't have 17 <laughs> businesses. And, uh, <laughs> like, no, I need more. I don't have an incredibly <laughs> successful, uh, I, excuse me, I have an incredibly beautiful <laughs> and wonderful wife. <laughs> I would like to but, by the way, I know, it, I know Thomas's last contract. He's doing just fine. Bro. You He's never have fine. to worry about a job. If you ever get fired, you can come and work for Train. Oh, yeah, you yeah, can play I, guitar. Like, our guys, way, it's all on track. Can we, anyway. can we all just. <laughs> I'm the politician in the group, all right? I mean, you want to look at my little salary? Okay, just, I'm on to you, brother. I'm just <laughs> That's amazing, you. man. I, I, yeah. I, I love will, what you just said. But, 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 but back to what Gavin was saying, I'm yeah. sure Doug, in his own way, will say the same thing. It is about the euphoria of victory for me. And when you're, I, I, I guess I could speak for you, and when yeah. you're making that call and something goes down and you're like, wow, that, that worked, that was yeah. right. I, right, I got my point across, yeah. and... And a bill was signed how, by how do the responded. up years and down years transfer as a GM? Like when you have a like you guys 
cleaned house last year. This year was a little bit more of a struggle. As a GM, do you go like, <laughs> do you like, no, I, I okay, like, wait, like you little, little, let's, wait, wait, let's go back I, to candor. I, I ask this because do you go like, panic, everything's got to change? Or do you go like, hey, man, this no. is part of the flow? No, man. Look, I have so much confidence in our organization, the people that are involved with Mike Smith, our staff, our personnel department. We just brought in Scott Pioli as our assistant general manager who I work you for. You told me something about yes. your coaching staff that I thought was profound, <laughs> that your defense and offense were kind of speaking different languages. Right, and we're at a spot right now where we're redefining what we are after a 4-12 and season, which was a terrible season. For us, we had such high expectations, and we didn't win a lot of games. So I didn't feel that euphoria as much as I was used to feeling that, which, look, I had an opportunity to be in, involved with the New England Patriots during the 2000s, an historic organization where all all we did there was win for the most part. Yeah. Get to Atlanta, no, we didn't win Super Bowls, but we've won a lot of games. Yeah. Mike Smith was second to build Belichick and wins over the last five years. I oh. mean, what an incredible record he yeah, has. Big. So you're around all of that, and then all of a sudden you flip to four and 12. That's difficult. Hmm. But always knowing that you can get back to the, again, back to the euphoria of victory. That's what keeps us going. We know, I feel very confident that we can turn this around. I do too, man. I like just talking to you and, and knowing your team and knowing Ryan, like that guy is serious, man. You have a lot of serious guys on your team. And whatever that focus is going to be, and I've told you before, like, my managers always go like, we love the down years, because without them, you don't know what that achievement is, and then you get to go kick everybody's ass. When, when, and right. being an underdog yeah. is so good. Like, I'm yeah. so happy that the Seahawks are the underdogs in the Super Bowl, because they're going to go kick their ass. Yeah. Because if they were, like, three-point overs or whatever, it'd be like, oh, no, they're going to lose. There's right. just something about underdogs for humanity. We talk about 13-3 and three last year where we, were, we weren't changing a thing. You don't change anything at 13-3. and three. At four and twelve, I call it productive vulnerability, man. You are saying, bring right. it on. Let's talk about change here. Right. We're so That's much it. more apt to do that. People and, get smarter. Yeah. And people show up. They come to work earlier when you're losing. Like, oh boy, looks like I'm out of a gig. <laughs> but uh, Doug, what about well, you, man? No, no question. I, I think what I do is the American dream. I mean, to see, to take a me kid, too. I think you're getting away with murder. To be right. real honest. <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, speak, speaking of more Sean, I'll tell a story about him quickly. You know, when he came to me at 20 years old, he said, I don't trust a lot of people. Huh. I still don't trust you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to go with you the whole deal. Oh, that's cool. And, and, and he said, don't ever bullshit me. Don't ever tell me something's not true. Keep it real with me, and I'll be with you till, you, till I die. Oh, that's cool. And, and I'll never forget, five years later, he called me. Late night. He probably had a few pops. Maybe had a few you smoke a, in him. And, uh, yeah. and he called me, and, and, and I was with Shiloh. I got out of bed, and he said, it, it took 45, 50 minutes. He said, hey, there's not a lot of white people in my life, not a lot of male figures I've ever trusted. And I, I knew where he was going, but it took him 45 minutes to say it. He said, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you. Thank you. I love you for looking out for me. And he's been the model client because he's listened to everything I've said. My wife said, and we've said, Gavin here has been very instrumental in him. Call him Goodell when he got uh, in trouble and, and looking out for him. And now he's like, a, he's like a hero. But, but like to, he really but to is see, not just in Seattle, but he came from Oakland. Right. But to see and, him at 20 years old now, to where he's at now, financially set, I mean, in a great situation in his life, that's what I get a kick out of. That's like, you know, I had a big part of this. And, and that's what's cool for me and my job. It's a to see really guys. big deal, man. And your former uh, guy in the podcast, Marcus Trufant, who's played the same thing, 11 years, you know, financially set, have his other brothers. That's, to me, my biggest thing. I know yeah. I, did my, I did the job right in seeing those guys. That's so a that's big deal. I love those guys. I never met... Uh, I, never met um, I, I know Marcus. His daughter and my daughter go to school together. So I go, I see him at birthday parties and stuff. I'm like, yeah. Marcus was a dog. <laughs> and he's like, I don't remember you, but I'll pretend that I do. And, uh, and, and for Beast Mode, like, that guy is everybody's hero. Like, 
I don't know why you took Pergo out the other night to hang out with Beast, Mo- Beast Mode. And I'm like at home like, Doug, Doug, when you- call me, call me, I'll text you. And then you're like, no, Pergo's coming. But anyway, I respect that. And uh, I heard I heard that was a good night. And we got some Hennessy for everybody. And then Pergo was like, man, he ordered Hennessy for the table and then drank it all. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the night. So uh, what's next for you? as like people and in your jobs like doug what what's next for you are you are you going to sign somebody that you think is like got the thing what is next for you doug we've been talking a lot about this can we have a let's have an honest you want to have that conversation now (laughs) what a perfect i go in there don't worry you need your own podcast because you're good at this yeah i got some questions (laughs) what's up doug what are you doing Look, I, <laughs> what's next for me? I don't know, but I want to. I want to try to revamp this business. I, I've, he legitimately, I've, I, by the way, doesn't know that was I, an honest. Yeah, answer. but I, but I want I want to enlist guys like Gavin. I want to enlist guys, you know, different people from different walks of life to help my clients out. And I think that I'm the best at it, the most unique at it in my business. And I want to try to put the right people in these guys' lives, do it differently, give back to the community, and have the right clients and really prosper. So I don't know what I'm doing yet, or what I'm how I'm doing it. But I'm going to do it with the help of Thomas and Gavin and you, Pat. And, uh, you know, that's cool, though. You want to revamp what you're in. And, and are the people at your agency, because I know that the other guys handle like NBA or the, yeah, the NBA and the MLB, and you're like the NFL division. Are those guys similar to you and your, your way of thinking? Do they take care of those guys? Uh, they do. Yeah, they do. And I think that, uh, yeah, so it's, no, it's been, a, it's been a good run. And, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm, laughing, I'm laughing at my wife, here. but, uh, no, they do. They, they're all in the same mindset and, uh, and, uh, and that's what's made it good. I don't believe a thing you said. By the way, okay, that was so Thomas, a, yeah, uh, because, because all of a sudden now uh, Doug so just strong. became a huge liar, yeah. a compulsive liar. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. Uh, what about you? What, what's next for you, Thomas? I think that. I have a feeling you guys are going to be real serious contenders in the uh, playoffs next year. I'm actually fearing you uh, from San Francisco and Seattle point of point of view. What's uh, what's next for you as a GM and as a dad and as a, as a person? Yeah, I think you know, obviously, uh, career wise, we have we have some cleaning up to do with the Falcons. We feel we're going to do that. We make some changes uh, across the board all throughout football operations. We need to clean this up. That's the initial. That's my initial focus. A- as far as dad, as far as person, I thought a lot about this. Seven years in now, seven seventh year as a general manager. I can't believe Doug that that's flown by like that. I think I'm starting to get to that spot at 47. If I admit I'm a little bit older than you, I mean, that I mean a lot older than me actually. <laughs> it's like no, it's 36 months. <laughs> Isn't that it's just, it's it's amazing? Huh? Yeah, Woo! It's weird. Look, I've been feeling I this. I inc- can't even hear you. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I've been right, feeling this incredible craving <laughs> recently about becoming more of a mentor. Like, I mean, it's about yeah. it's about legacy, right? I mean, it's it's not that easy to think about legacy in your 40s. You're thinking, no, man, I need to think about that in my 60s. Nice. We know how important it is to think about legacy yes. now. And I think as much as I'm driven towards, you know, making, you know, this a successful football team. And but the only the only legacy that matters is to your own children. Like, who gives a yes. shit about everything else? It's like, you care, what, right. you, you care what your kids think. I want to, yes, I want to walk away from this being the right, you know, successful type of GM. That aside, being a good person, doing it honestly. I've said this time and again with to Arthur Blank, who's a, a fantastic and moral person, as well as Mike Smith, who is. We can do this the right way. We can build a team with the right locker room, not a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, bad guys, bad thug situation with being very upfront about how we do things. I mean, I we've said this from day one and I'll, and I'll end on this. Let's make sure that, and this isn't hokey, let's make sure we enjoy this journey. Let's do it the right way. Let's have fun doing it. Let's let's help mentor along the way and let's win championships. And that, that's that's what I, what I hope to do. I, I do that with my band before we go play. I'm like, enjoy tonight. Just go out there and have fun. And just one more side note, if you make any mistakes, you're fired. 
Is that the way you are? Uh, so why, why don't you answer your own question? the way answer you are? Your, answer your own question. Seriously, what about you? Man, I'm Seriously. struggling writing a record. It's the worst time of my life. Oh, give me a break. Like, I leave my house. I haven't seen my kids in forever. I go write these songs with, you know, myself or when 10 When do you other write people. songs? Are you one of those all the, the time, guys? All the time. Every day, all day, Literally, every or do day. You, do you just have a, you have a notebook, pen I and just, paper? I just, you know, I just what, worked with doing? this recent guy named Greg Kirsten, and I think we found this really special place. So, that, do you know, so let me ask you, so you need someone to sort of pull that out of you? I write write lyrics and melody and I can play very little piano and guitar like not enough to impress anybody and uh, like not Adam Levine or John Mayer kind of stuff and then uh, so I need to get in a room with somebody who knows what they're doing on instruments right. so you know that's what's next for me and plus I got two awesome little kids and some older kids and I'm trying to keep my older kids out of jail and uh, keep my younger kids in preschool. Is there having made it in your career? There's an, I'm, I mean, are you just there's like, never is there a, like there's a never place an arrival. where you're like, okay, if I hit, you know, nope. I'm like Mr. Grammys, Mr. There's you, no, of there's you don't no have a, place you don't have of a arrival. Like that. There's not it's a place. like they say success is not a place, it's not a definition, it's a direction. I mean, you don't need to be something. And then when I see when I see other artists out there and I go like, "Oh, well that's just that guy's weird." So he's like like Steven Tyler, super wonderful guy, but he's like a pirate. You know, he's like, "We're <laughs> You know, he's like every day he's a different guy and he looks uh, like He's one of my musical heroes. Right. But I don't want to be that. You don't want to be that. That's not where I'm headed. And then when I when I see Bruce Springsteen, I go like, I hate that guy's music. Why? You do? But he's an amazing guy. Do you hate his music? I honestly? want to be like that. Yeah, just, you know, like, I'm on fire, amazing song. But, yeah. like, most of it, he's just, he's overrated, uh, whatever. Who do you, you love? Who who your favorite? I mean, who do you think's like the uh, big... James Taylor? Well, of course. I, I, he's on, my man. favorite no, no. human. And Seriously? then I I was with Personally? him the other day, and I was like, James, can I talk to you? And he's like, Hey, man, you're awesome. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it was a uh, like one of my biggest. Who else? Moments yeah, how about time. beyond uh, Taylor? Uh, I mean, Robert else? Plant. Yeah. Uh, from Led Zeppelin. When you who was your inspiration when you started? Robert Plant. Who was Plant? And Steven Tyler. And so, like, Steven Tyler and I, you know, we've become, like, kind of buddies. And, you know, John Bon Jovi is so lovely to me. Yeah. And he's written such outrageously good songs. I mean, he plays stadiums all over the world. If I'm aspiring to a place, I would say that it's Bruce Springsteen's career, but I want James Taylor's personality. Nice. Because, and I don't know if you can get both. Like, I, I think there might be a thing that you have to have a different kind of, like, a woohoo, like, to even get to that place of, like, ruling the world. And what do you, I mean, what do you, do you feel you, that way in politics? No, I don't know about that. But what do you, what's your, I mean, what's your aspiration? <laughs> no way. So, I mean, so what, what is the aspiration? I mean, is it, do you want to spend the next 30, 40 years just being on the road and just trying to fill up stadiums? Or what, what is, I mean, is there a point where you're like, man, I'm going to hang up my cleats. We're talking football. You know. And saying, um, you know, this was a great career. I'm done. Now I'm going to go back to the family. I want, um, thanks for asking me that, by the way. That's, yeah. a, <clears throat> that's a really interesting question. I, I actually, I want to be a good dad, you know, because my father, my brother used to always say, when I'm on my deathbed, I don't think I'm ever going to go, oh, I should have done those two other hours worth of paperwork. You know, you're never going to say, I should have worked more. You're going to say, I wish I would have spent more time with my wife or my yeah. kids. And so I definitely want to get to that place. I, I feel like I'm a future farmer. I want to be... I want to be planting seeds at some point instead yeah. of writing songs. I want so to feel. Speak. Well, you so I, was that a sex reference? Yeah. <laughs> and yes. so, but I want to be. <laughs> yes, I want to like maybe uh, make wine or have a vineyard or an organic farm in in Northern California. You're not a guy who's going to retire. You're I, not I can't. Slow I, don't, down. I don't think I can, and that's yeah. a bummer because right. I I wish everybody else would. You know what I mean? So, like it'd be like, man, Rolling Stones and then Led Zeppelin. And when did you know? I don't, when did you? Were, how old were you when you knew, man? This is my gonna be my career. I was a, I like, was playing drums early, like at twelve, and then at sixteen, no one else would sing, so I just was like, I'll do it. 
Was that know? it? And then girls would be like, ah, yes, I was saying it earlier. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to do that and drink a million beers. Like that was uh, what you did in Pennsylvania. But it was 12 years old. I mean, honestly, you didn't feel like, I mean, your parents say, oh, no, when he was three, he really my, had a you know, musical My parents talent. had seven kids. I was the last one. So they went from like, you better be, you know, all these things to by the time I was around, they were like, just don't come home dead. You know, like they, they didn't care. And then when I, I remember telling my mom when I was 10, I was like, I think I know what I want. I want to be a musician. She said, At 10. You're never going to get any sleep. <laughs> that was her response. It was like dead on. But why? What was it? At the time I was 10, I was like, My mom's high. And uh, she was just dead <laughs> on. So what, then what was it about 10 years old? I mean, what, what was the inspiration that you walk home and say, well, Hey, I, mom, I got I to the place where I was like, You know, I keep playing baseball and football and basketball, and I just can never get over the hump of mediocre. I really wanted to be a baseball player. And then, like, as a student, I can't think of anybody else that was worse at it, like, at being a student. <laughs> and so I just didn't care about those things. That wasn't what I so cared about. So what happened in music? Where was the spark? Where, how did that happen? You know, I remember when I was uh, uh, in kindergarten, I came home, and my dad had a Manhattan in his hand. He's like, get in here! You know, and he was, and we were listening to Take, uh, I think it's called Take Five by Dave Brubeck, and it goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh, no, that's Hit the Road Jack. But anyway, <laughs> there was this, there was this uh, song that he, he wanted me to keep a beat to, and I was able to do it, and he was like, Jesus Christ, you're four years old, you're not supposed to be able to do that. You know, wow. like he wanted to like, <laughs> he best. wanted to like teach me, and, so but I already that early. And so he, wow. was, I don't know. So you think it's it, it, nature nurture? I mean, it was just not, you just, just I, you I had it. I think that I had it inherently, but had my parents discouraged it, I, you know, I, I respected them. I want, you know, I'm a pleaser. There are some kids, like, yeah, right. I have, I have four children. So some of them I know are pleasers and some of them are like, I'm going to go against the grain and see how far I can get. I was a pleaser. I wanted to like make everybody happy and make no arguments, make sure the house is quiet all the time, you know, <laughs> okay. and that kind of guy. And at what point did you hit it where you're like, I can make money and this is a career? Uh, We're like, damn, this thing's I, I was painting houses in Hercules. Hercules? I love that. You love? In the Bay Area, brother. Yeah. I love so it. So I was, I was painting houses in Hercules, and I was on my way home on uh, California 37 yeah. to Petaluma. <laughs> and I heard Meet Virginia on the record, or on the radio. And I was like, I'm not sure I'm going back to that house tomorrow. And it was literally that... Yeah. Wow. Just randomly. I was like, I really what don't year know was that? if what I'm year going was that? back there what tomorrow. What year was that? I think it was 98. 98. Yeah. And that was it. Yep. Uh, awesome. I mean, you know, uh, that was the way that went. So, you know, it, it, we all have a, a weird yeah. a weird place that uh, that we all come from. And yeah. uh, you're a Bay Area guy Bay originally, Area right? Five generations. My daughter, six it's, kids. It's really six literally the greatest place in the world. Yeah. I'm and you dug that. yours as well, uh, five generations? Moved there when I was, no, moved there when I was five to the South Bay and then been in the city for like 20 years. Hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And Thomas, how come you don't live there? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to live there. I hope these guys can get me a job there when I'm finished, finished my career in Atlanta. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah. I love it. Um, Where anyway, are you from by originally? The way, I just, I just, he just found out about 280 from San Francisco. He kept going 101. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I told him, go 280 and go stop by Woodside. Yes. And he's like, and now he's like addicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He brings his bike the, with him to stop at Woodside. What am I thinking? <laughs> That's the alternative route. Yeah. So and, where am I from? Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, I'm from Ohio originally. See, my favorite people are from Ohio. How about that? I just, I don't know what it is about you guys. Like, really, you're Ohio, like Michigan, lovely right? people. You're from Michigan. Well, but you're really Canadian. And Canadians are... Shit, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hippie parents live in a commune. In I a, love in it. A, in a I want to have, yeah. have a commune. Oh, geez. Here so, we go. Um, here we go. Well, so, here we go. Right? You know, I, I, I don't want to cut this short, but I just have sure. two. It's three in the morning, brother. I, said, I know. <laughs> I, I got to ask these last, these last two because questions. Because I was the one interjecting. No, these, sorry, these, I was interviewing It is two, you, three brother. in the morning. I'm you so did. sorry. <laughs> My last three questions, <laughs> two questions, last ones are, what is the standout moment that brought you to the job that you're in currently that you can go like, that was the thing that I just knew it was it. Hmm. Who wants to go first? And yeah, then I'm, I'm then I'm gonna one last wrap up question. Then I'm out. 
come on, man. There's, there's always a moment that you go like, I know what that is. I, I, I know what it is. Mm. When, I, when I made it, you think when I, when the question... You don't have to have made it, but like you go like, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. The thing that got you to your job that you were like, see, I thought I was going to go here, but that made me go like, I know what I'm supposed to do now. When I, when I was in college, my roommate was Johnny Johnson, and he was a year ahead of me, and I got to meet his, I got to meet his agent when I was still in school and I saw what he was doing for my, my roommate and best friend. Yeah. And I immediately said, that's it. I said, that's what I want to get into. All my friends went to work for Cisco or Hewlett Packard, whatever the place. I said, that's what I want to be. I want to be an agent. Hmm, it's cool. And it like one day I said, that's it. And that was in 1993 and still been doing it ever since. Oh, hmm. that's great. Yeah. Thomas, what about, what's your moment? I always wanted to be the best secondary defensive back coach in the National Football League. That's what I wanted to do. I want to coach football. You knew that since you were what? Secondary back. I mean, no, I mean, like, I wanted, to be a, I wanted to be a defensive back coach. That's what I wanted to be. Since wow. you were what? Five? I mean, why my dad that? was a coach. But why that not? I mean, quarterback coach. What the hell no, is that? No, man, because I, I love playing. I, I thought defensive backs, man, I thought they were cool. I they thought they had them. swagger. I thought they <laughs> yeah. got the women, man. I don't know. I thought, you know, but, but, I, but I really, I it's did. True. I, I got to be, the woman. Yeah. I wanted to be, <laughs> I wanted to be, I wanted to be a coach. I thought, and then yeah. along the way, my dad said, "Hey, man, give this, give this personnel thing a try. See if you want to do this." Yeah. I got in quickly, and I realized evaluating talent, traveling because around. Because your dad was a coach, my dad so was a coach, you yeah. knew what that was. I knew. For, I, I mean, would have never even known that there was a defensive back coach. Sure, but for you, there. You for me, knew I, I watch it, and, and and from the day I was born, I've been around this sport, and I realized how you know how incredible it could be. Yeah, and but but then along the way, I realized after you know my dad had been a coach for a long time and then in personnel and i realized that scouting and personnel evaluation learning uh, you know traveling and learning about thread count it was something that i was really interested in yeah. so you know in the end it was about scouting and, and i realized player personnel and that in the nfl you know that it's about coaches become head coaches assistant coaches personnel guys become general managers and i was mm. blessed to be where i am and i mm. I, I you know I what think, happened to uh, general managers what, what, After you're done, what are you owners? What are, what are you going to do next? You know, after general managing, uh, would I you think, consider that, general managing the Oakland Raiders when my manager's oh brother man, takes it on? Geez, seriously, and rebuilding. <laughs> no, the, that's like the a, empire. Don't do that to him. He's better than. I mean, that's just gonna, a. That's gonna a rebuild tw- the empire. When, you watch. When? Hi. In, in when? about a year. Oh God. Wow. I grew up with you Blitnikoff, you need Branch, that. Kenny Stabler, Kenny. Blitnikoff is from my, my days, man. I love those guys. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to general manage. A, I want to general manage a, a snowboard team. Hmm? <laughs> That's what I want to do. A what? I, a what? <laughs> I'm an avid snowboarder. Are you really? Are you I serious? am a huge snowboarder. Really? I used to ride. I mean, if if my if our scouts knew how much time I put when I was younger in the business, and I would go back to Colorado because we live in Boulder as well. Oh, right, you were there. And I would get 90 damn days in a year. Oh, Are you man. kidding me? In the I rode my too. butt off in this like bluebird nine, days. Nine nine yeah. um, nine feet of snow oh. and like 45 degrees. It was and amazing. Sunny. It was amazing. So. I love. I mean, I love. I mean, honestly, do I do? I really do appreciate the whole adventure games, X Games. People like yeah. where they're pushing themselves now. And this is a whole different topic. But you watch those kids coming off those hits. No, doing you, flips you, on. I mean, on snowmobiles. snowmobiles. That's insane. You saw the guy who won. His, his brother passed Seriously, away last passed year. Away the guy wins. Wins. It's intense. Saw that a few weeks so you get me a podcast. With Crazy. <laughs> That's right. Is that all it's about? It is. It, yes. Yeah. So, Gavin, what? I refuse to answer. <laughs> no, it's just not. Next question. Thank no. you. Really? Uh, yeah, I appreciate but that. I thought we were. I'm Marshawn Lynch's speech we, coach. We got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think he got it? What is that moment that made you go like, man? I kind of think that. No, I my can't... moment. My moment was that not political. Was business. Richard Branson. Literally driving in, in a tank, in Times Square, for Virgin Cola. Huh. Going after Coca Cola, Virgin, and that just Cola, weird. I remember just a strange thing. I remember, and I was like mesmerized by that. Wow. I loved it. Yeah, and that's how I got in business. That's how I started my businesses. Huh. And I'll tell you, and and Doug and Charlotte know this. Literally, 
a couple of weeks ago. I was out on Necker Island with Richard Branson. I was invited to give a speech. Oh, that's cool. And there's Branson. Are you I'm friends about, with him? And well, we become friendly. And I was like, man, like full circle. Oh, that's cool. And here cool. he is, you know, and, and he's writing notes, and I'm talking. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was that was pretty intense. That's and special. Awesome. But it, you know what it was about? It was about branding yourself. Being, I mean, back to what I said earlier, being yourself, man. Yeah. It was just, just being audacious, and that's what Branson was always about, going up against the Titans, just being man, his hustling. Book, his book about going up against, uh, awesome. you know, British Airways and how yeah. dirty they played. Oh, and Yeah, yeah he's a, no, he, exactly. He's Doing a real serious guy. With one airplane. Yeah. He crushed these airlines. And there are about seven or eight airlines that are literally bankrupt, out of business. And he came out with one damn airline. So it just, it, it, there's a tenacity and an entrepreneurial energy, a, you know, sort of a fanaticism, but in, a, in an enlightened sense. And I love that. And I just think yeah. there's, there's sort of, there's truths in life in that yeah. respect. That's so cool, you're man. You're passionate. You believe in what you're doing. Just go for it. And, uh, and again, you're, you're always, uh, I think the worst thing is when you're doing that, but you're not, you're, when you're closed minded, you're not going to be. You have to be observational. You right. can have that passion and that intensity, but you have to maintain. You can't be ideological in that. If respect. you go into a situation even now and think that you were there to teach people, you're dead. You're in trouble. Yeah. More. So my last question is: How do people get in touch with you? How do how do people find out more about you? So that when they listen to this and they go like, "Man, I got to find out more about that guy." How do they do that? Doug. <laughs> How do they do that? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, they do you will. Have a Twitter, do you have a, 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 yeah, twi Instagram, Twitter, 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 do you, Twitter, do you, do you tweet Twitter, or yeah. twat? I, I, oh, I'm not an Instagram guy. My Twitter, D Hendrickson41. Okay, at D, D Hendrickson41. 41. 41. Okay, 41 is my number. Great. Um, you can uh, email That's your number because you don't play yeah. any sport. Yeah, yeah, Twitter's the right. Yeah, Twitter's the right one. And, okay. Uh, I will get right back to you. Great. And, oh, that's and just Thomas, nonsense. That, Thomas, that, for, for huge Atlanta Falcons fans, how can they like keep in touch with, like, uh, do you take pictures of the players and like keep in touch with, like, how, how Instagram friendly are you? Uh, I'm not, and I don't tweet. <laughs> you got you to get in. Oh, it, I man. understand that, but it's time. Yeah, dog. I understand. Time we we right. honestly have a great uh, public relations department, and, and they're, the, they're the ones that communicate with. Mm. And, and the fact that I'm actually on here tonight without communicating with our PR. Oh, yeah, it's not good. Shit, it's out of trouble. Thomas, you are in serious trouble. <laughs> but then I'm with you, brother. <laughs> You're all in trouble. We're all in and trouble. And I'm doing awesome. Oh, yeah, exactly. I don't That's think it. we said anything that was uh, uh, going to so hurt anybody. By the way, you. Mr. 1.9 million followers over here Gal at you Gavin Newsom. No, I got one something, but not a one. Not, not oh, not man, one dude. Nine, but you're no, such good. a rock star. Hardly, hardly. So tweet me. Tweet me. What are you? At Gavin Newsom. Easy. <laughs> Just saying. Early. I was there early. Man. In the beginning. This was my favorite early podcast days. of all time. All you guys times. might be the most interesting people I've ever spent uh, time with. <laughs> but you know what's even more awesome? What's that? I have a way better job than all of you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thank God. Congratulations, well, everybody. Thanks. Congratulations. Mr. Rockstar. Thank thanks so much for being here. This was really an honor for me. Like, thanks, I'm brother. so jacked, man. Thank you so thanks, much. Thanks, man. We You're the fun. best. It's a right. pleasure, bro. Pat, appreciate it, man. Great. Huge <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> Fun, man. Thank you. There you have it, folks. An agent, a GM, mayor of my favorite city, turned lieutenant governor, uh, hashing it out just days before the Super Bowl. Uh, you heard Gavin mention that Doug was thinking about making a major move as an agent, and he did. Shortly after the podcast, he switched agencies, and he's now Relativity Sports. Thomas is making plans uh, and moves already for the Falcons' upcoming season, and Gavin is working his way through the always complicated world of U.S. politics. You can keep up with uh, what they're doing on Twitter if you want to go to dhendrickson41. Hendrickson is uh, with a CK, not an X. Uh, that's dhendrickson41. Uh, Thomas Dimitrov, D-I-M-I-T-R-O-F-F. -F. Uh, although his last tweet was May 2012, uh, but you can always hear about him in the NFL news. I just saw him on ESPN two days ago. And... Gavin Newsom is at Gavin Newsom, and he's already got 1.2 million followers. Last tweet was probably about five minutes ago. Uh, Gavin also has a great website at GavinNewsom.com. Seriously, whoever is doing social media for this guy has got it going on, man. 
Uh, you can always find us on Patcast Podcast on your Instas, Twitters, and dot coms. And feel free to hit us up and tell us how you feel about Jimmy's draft day predictions or anything else that you feel compelled to talk about. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week on the podcast. <laughs>